Please remember, none of this is financial advice. I have no finance background. The XX Network is a sponsor of this show and makes this show possible. Follow your bliss and the universe will open doors for you where there were only walls. Sam Bankman Freed robbed investors and customers. He then levered stolen money and failed. He created an epic Ponzi scheme. He's being paraded around television like he's some sort of hero and everyone should buy his story. But he's guilty of very serious crimes that could be life sentences. Nothing is usual about these circumstances. Uh, we talked to the Treasury Secretary about uh, crypto. And uh, as you know very well, uh, we're going to talk later to Sam Bankman Freed, or so we think. Um, BlackRock had an investment in FTX. $24 million in a fund of funds. $24 million. Yeah, it was, it was in a situ, it was not in the core part of our business. Andrew Sorkins, the CNBC journalist, is interviewing Larry Fink. At the same exact event, Sam Bankman Freed was interviewed. It's Andrew's job to extract truth. Journalists are supposed to give tough questions. Andrew chose to throw Sam softballs. He chose to take it easy on Sam. Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock, is one of the most powerful men in the world. BlackRock invested in FTX that later turned out to be a fraud. This is a stain on BlackRock's reputation, and asking about BlackRock's investment in FTX is embarrassing. Fink could make one phone call and have Andrew fired. Okay, so what do you, what do you think happened there? And, and then I want to talk about the diligence piece of it, because part of what's happening here is there's a lot of people questioning all of these fancy firms that everybody looks right. at, Sequoia, you, others, a lot of people invested in this company. Mm -hmm. The whole point of investing is due diligence. Andrew is questioning BlackRock's due diligence. The reason I would invest with BlackRock is because I'm trusting their due diligence. And it appears that nobody was minding the store. Well, I think people are minding the stores. The question is, you know, I'm not, we're going to have to wait and see and how this all plays out. I mean, right now we can make all the judgment calls that it, it looks like there were some misbehaviors of, of major consequences. FTX robbed his money. If you were robbed, would you call it, quote, misbehaviors? Would you even talk about it on national television? Uh, I, you know, I am, I assume, look at, by the long, if you look at the sequoias of the world, they've had unbelievable returns over a long period of time. I am sure they did the due diligence. Could they have been misled? Could they have done other things? Could we have been misled in the small little investments we did? Sure, but until we have more facts, I'm not right. going to speculate. It Fink, the wealthiest, most powerful person, is on stage saying, we don't have all the facts. Could we have been misled? Sure. My point still remains. If you're Fink and someone robbed you, would you air out your dirty laundry on stage? Wouldn't you be a little ticked off? Would you even attend this event knowing that the man that robbed you and embarrassed you is going to sit in the same chair as you and tell his side of the story? Of course you would. This is a narrative that they're trying to promote. Has this changed your view of crypto? at all. You, have, you now have a deal with Coinbase, um, and, and yet you were always sort of also, I think, a bit of a uh, skeptic of all of this. Oh, I actually believe most of the companies are not going to be around. I still believe that. I do believe because that. They're, because they're now real, they're frauds, they're what? Well, I mean, think about FTX. I mean, you can look back now. FTX created it. Its failure was it's creating its own token. It was not a DeFi it wasn't a, it wasn't a uh, you know a, a ledger that was open to the world. It was a closed ledger. Right. It was not distributed. So the whole foundation of what crypto is, it's supposed to be a distributed ledger that is across the system. Fink uses Garlinghouse's elevator speech. 99% of crypto is going to be washed away. The failure of FTX was creating its own token. It wasn't a distributed open ledger. The failure was because it was centralized. We've heard anti-crypto narratives, and now Fink is embracing open public ledgers or crypto assets. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important, very important, very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. 
The recent events in the global bond market is alarming. Gilts, which is the United Kingdom's version of treasury bonds, have seen considerable volatility and sell-off pressure, so much so that major pension funds have become insolvent and the Bank of England had to step in and bail them out. Apollo Global attempted to issue corporate bonds to finance mergers and acquisitions activities of Twitter, Brightspeed, and Tenneco, but failed to get buyers. All these events led to the freezing of corporate debt markets in the USA. Blackstone's REIT has halted withdrawals from its real estate funds, allowing only 5% saleability for owners. These developments point to an underlying credit crisis that could adversely affect all markets. Consequently, Fink just leaked that the bond market is being transformed. How so? Listen carefully. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. He praises open public ledgers, and the next generation of markets will be tokenization. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. In order to eliminate intermediaries from the equation, an internet of value is being developed. This is made possible through decentralized ledgers which allow for instantaneous settlements and provide individuals with the ability to custody their own assets instead of leaving them in the hands of third parties such as DTCC. Crypto assets are a cornerstone for this new system as public and decentralized ledgers facilitate its functioning. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. You don't need trust banks. But does that disrupt you eventually? Because you are custodian all of these we don't, assets. No, we're not a custodian. We're not, we, we don't, we use third party custodians in everything we do. In everything you do? We don't, we're not a custodian bank. The debt based system is dependent on third parties and fees, trusted middlemen, which are known as banks. Your assets are borrowed and lent with leverage. Similar example is FTX. However, the traditional model involves a central bank that bails out banks when they get wrecked. The USA has stringent banking guidelines, but the dollar is all over the globe, and the rest of the world's banks have different laws. This is called the euro dollar market. The euro dollar curve is saying that we will see severe deflation or a panic followed by inflation or money printing. The gilt market dumping has led to over 80 trillion in losses because the banking system is just like FTX. They leverage against their assets and the gilt sold off out of nowhere. The entire system is breaking because it's built off of bonds and they levered the bonds and now the bonds are selling off. The foundation is volatile and this will lead to trusted middlemen becoming not so trusted. The custodianship economy Fink describes needs a reform. This is done with distributed ledger technology from a foundational level. Never let a good crisis go to waste. The narrative is this. Trust the middlemen to trustless technologies. So, you're, so your goal, in that, by the way, I don't it's, think that, that it's, he it's, was technically a custodian either, which is a separate issue. I think they were. I don't know if there was a real custodian in that closed ledger, but that's a whole other story. Uh, you should ask him that question. <laughs> um. Fink is laughing about FTX robbing him, making light that Sam never had the crypto assets he said he did. A crypto ledger is auditable by everyone. Sam robbed billions of dollars from customers and investors. If you or I did something like this, we'd be in handcuffs immediately. Sam hasn't even been arrested yet. Uh. No, I, I mean, the transformation, think about it, instantaneous settlement, right. bonds and stocks, um, no middlemen, we're going to bring down fees even more dramatically. Um, as for me, I don't have to vote on any shares anymore because the beneficial owner will do all the voting. They'll okay, have well, it. We'll and that's it. where I want to go with this conversation. Okay, I knew I was going to take you there. Th thank you. <laughs> um. <laughs> Larry Fink is not some guy up the street. He's the CEO of a bank that merged with the Fed. BlackRock handles the Fed's investments. Fink is telling you that the future is trustless. The future is on open and distributed ledgers. Crypto assets are open and distributed ledgers, and they're the core of this revolution. I'm invested in XRP. However, there will be many winners, and if you picked a protocol that accounts for this traditional wealth, the upside could be enormous. We hired BlackRock uh, for their expertise in these markets. They're actually an asset manager. They, they are a very large asset manager, which is active in, in, the, in the markets that we're concerned with, with the primary market and secondary market credit facilities. 
Uh, it was uh, done very quickly due to the urgency and the need for their expertise. Uh, we will rebid the contract as uh, as we in practice do uh, going forward. Yeah. And um, BlackRock wrote a white paper called Going Direct, where they laid out a plan for dealing with C-19. The Fed partnered with BlackRock and carried out the Going Direct plan. This is not an ordinary asset manager. Dang. BlackRock is the world's largest asset management firm, overseeing nearly $9 trillion in assets. That's more than double where it was 10 years ago. It also holds a stake in just about every company listed on the S&P 500. To put that in perspective, BlackRock manages more assets than the entire GDP of Japan or Germany or Great Britain or any other nation in the world except the United States and China. And it's not just size. BlackRock also runs a technology platform that currently houses at least 10% of all the stocks and bonds around the world. So Secretary Yellen, just hypothetically, if a $9 trillion investment company failed, would that likely have a significant impact on our economy? BlackRock's assets under management is larger than most countries. Their technology platform, Aladdin, is an AI trading platform that, according to Warren, currently houses 10% of the world's stocks and bonds. In the interview, Fink said they weren't a custodian. So was he lying during the interview? If he was lying, it illustrates my point. He didn't address crypto's role in removing the middlemen. Instead, he addresses its potential to transform all the markets. Larry Fink is not just an ordinary CEO. This is an ordinary speculation. He knows what's going to happen. And he just let you in on a massive secret. On some other things I think the private sector should be contributing, should be contributing talent and expertise. And we just have to really guard against that regulatory capture because we have seen Things like privacy regulation or other things get co-opted in a way that really benefits big firms and makes things harder for small firms. So that's like the cautionary tale in all in having the firms involved. Is an athe, the Ripple board member in Stanford and Harvard PhD, is telling the BIS and Bank of Thailand that decentralized privacy should be explored. We should avoid regulatory capture. Or are moving to a world of decentralization and a privacy layer is important. This is why Chris Larson invested in the XX network. It's a scalable quantum resistant chain that was founded by David Chom, the godfather of crypto. We're not on our journey to save the world, but to save ourselves. But in doing that, you save the world. The influence of a vital person vitalizes. Thanks everyone, I hope you enjoyed the show. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. If you enjoy content like this, please consider joining my Patreon.